So be prepared for that. Uh, hmm. I suppose uh, you can sleep wherever you'd like. Hick a house. And he kind of heads off into the city with the queen. Yeah. This is pretty shitty. Are these houses like... If I open the door to one of the houses, there's going to be water inside, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to climb up on top of a house and like sleep on the roof. Like put all my stuff on top of a roof. Okay. No problem. Let me just make sure it's not raining today. Nope. Cool. It's so cloudy, pretty overcast, um, and it's colder than usual. It's like 64 degrees. Um... But yeah, you can sleep outside, totally. You got like a blanket and stuff. Yeah, I'm fucking hairy as hell. That's true. I've been uh, living just, in the forest just, my whole life. Keep in mind, if you sleep in plate mail, uh, you do not regain HP or uh, fatigue scores. I'll take that off then as I sleep. Okay. I think naturally, like, my character is going to want to sleep comfortably anyway. He's not going to really be sleeping in armor. Like, mm -hmm. at the end of the night, like, during his time spent alone or sleeping, he's going to be taking that stuff off and sleeping comfortably in his fat noble guy clothes. Yep. Yep. Most people don't sleep in armor unless they, you know, unless they're, like, in an abandoned town near a possessed swamp or something. But I don't know. You're good. Uh, and yeah, Desmond, I guess he just picks the nearest house and probably goes to the second level if there is one. What time of day is it? Pretty early in the evening, right? Yep. If you guys headed out around like 9 or 10, and it's probably like 5 p.m. or something. Um. But it... because, you know, because of the, the way the weather is, it's, you know, it's kind of... It's cloudy, so it yeah. looks maybe darker than usual, but... Uh, how wooded is it? Is it pretty... Is it like a pretty open swamp? Like, like looking I mean, into the swamp, or is it, is it pretty I mean, the, this area in particular is pretty cut down because it used to be a town. Right. But you can see that the forest is starting to slowly grow back. There's probably patches of trees a half mile out. Um, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take my horse out and go out to the edge of the trees then, I guess. Okay. And, uh, try to commune with the forest. Let's see, uh, um, yeah, ask it, I'll, like, kinda ask the forest, uh, To show me the cause. Yeah, show me the cause of the growth. Yes, I would word it. Are you, do you pray standing or like do you are you hugging the tree? What do you normally do? <laughs> just a dwarf, and I'm just like yeah. arms wrapped around the tree. I mean, it's not a tree like that. These are these are like saplings. That are regrowing. There's not a lot. I mean, like I said, this is near the town, which they probably cut down all the trees. Well, yeah, but you said like half a mile out there. Were... Yeah, it's like a little pocket of small trees and stuff regrowing. It's not like massive oak trees or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've gone out to where the trees are growing, anyways. And it's like knelt, maybe with my hand on the ground. And just like on the earth. Okay. Trying to speak to it. Yeah. And you fall to your knees and what might be pain, it's not real pain, it's like mental anguish. And you feel your brain. Your mind's eye. You're you're just it's hard to explain, but 
it, it's like blinking and uh, when you blink you just see you just see the swamp you know and you feel like there is no life here like the, the nature you're talking to is dead and it hurts and there is something very wrong with this place is what you get back from it mm -hmm. but there is there is there's life it's not the trees they're all dead as far as you can tell mm -hmm. in the swamp uh there is some life and that's the only way you get any mental images at all um but it's like you can't really glean much from it okay the most way all i can tell is that it's, it's like a big dead swamp of yeah Indeed. Um, and you go find a house? Another house? Yeah, I head back and find a house that's got a second floor in it. Uh, okay. Go sleep upstairs, I guess. Mm -hmm. Is it a different one than Desmond on purpose, or what? Um... Uh, I guess I don't really. I, I didn't pay attention to what house he went into, so. Tell me to roll a d20, and if it's the same one he went into. What? D12 or something? I don't care. Yeah, I can roll a d20. Uh, one. Okay. This house is empty that you are in, as far as you can tell. Yeah, I just go in and make myself at home, I guess. All right. It's stinky and gross, but you can do so. And if there's nothing else you guys want to do, then I will switch it to uh, the ninth Sun Scorch. It is the morning, and the weather is windy. Temperatures moderate, 73. And it's moderately windy, too. And the rain has stopped completely. Uh, it, well, it was drizzling a little bit yesterday. It wasn't too bad. <coughs> and you guys reconvene. Uh, let's see. Is there anything you want to say or do as you guys come back together? I'm going to go talk to Violet for a sec. Okay. Yeah, she's with the group. Are you trying to like pull her aside? Uh, not necessarily. If people want to chime in, they can, but I'm going to like go look over to Violet, catch her attention, and say, uh, hello, Violet. <laughs> her eyes pierce through your soul. She just looks at you. So, I see that Orsic and Desmond both have living weapons and we you I told you I wanted one but I don't care if is that something that happened <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I told Violet I was like so you think Shog you think you can help Shog get one <laughs> but okay but that was yeah I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm sure she didn't say yes. No, she, no. She kind of just like uh, smile, not smile, but like kind of. It wasn't like a like, oh, get away from me. It was like a. She was kind of having fun with it. Okay. Like she was kind of like. <laughs> sure. But I told her that I wanted a. Like a living chopper or like an artifact chopper. Oh yeah! Didn't she say like, 
prove you're worth it or something yeah. like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. I remember that. And I'm going to say to Violet, if you don't have a chopper, a living chopper, do you know where I could find one? She shrugs. Hmm. Okay, well, I just want to be on par with the group. And Shaw can, Shaw can take care of it. Shaw good at maintaining equipment and cooking and killing killing bad guys and yeah that's basically where he's gonna stop talking and uh this is a one-sided conversation yeah eventually he's just gonna start walking away <laughs> And just start like kind of. I mean, you're you're gonna something. walk away. The party's together talking. Well, no, no, not walk away, walk away. Like, yeah, I I realize that, and I'm just gonna kind of like take a couple steps back from her and just kind of like do my own thing and like sit around, you know. Stand Creator and destroyer of the universe, brought low by conversations with bugbears. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. Oh, well, that's great. Plan going is going as planned. Playing with his children. Um, cool. So Morden says, "Ah, uh, mm. well, I hope you all had a pleasant sleep. Uh, from here on, it's well." I suppose we can take our horses a ways yet, but we're going to be trudging on foot through the swamps. Yes, I have intentions to let the horses go. This is not a place for them. Any questions? Is there a gate that we are going through? Excuse me? Where are we going? Oh. He looks to Rush Giggle. Uh, we're going to meet someone like her. Another guardian. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yes. Excellent. Uh, let's go. Seems to not really know how to end the conversation, so everyone mounts up and heads east along the quiet, dismal road slash swampy water. And you're gonna travel like It's gonna be a ways. You're gonna travel like eight hours before you dismount. Um, the travel pace significantly slows as the swamp picks up and the trees are no longer being cut down. And things quickly deteriorate. So after about eight hours of travel, Morden lets go of the horses and lets you all know, yes. Uh, <clears throat> so from here on, we will be hoofing it, as they say, or roughing it. Was is that the saying? Looks to Desmond. Desmond shrugs. Well, yeah. sleep will be probably difficult here, but. Uh, 
do what you can. Perhaps we can find some high ground. It's D&D. This is where you talk. Tell me what you want to do. I'm a talk. Skip to the next day. I'm walking into the swamp. I'm just walking with the guys and I'm just trying, I'm traveling, so I'm just okay. kind of keeping my mouth shut and want to get to the, the next garden. Yeah, it's just, it's just, you know, I need to know what you guys are doing when I say, yeah. like, okay, it's swampy water. What do you want to do? Yeah, my, my you want to sleep yeah. in the water? <laughs> do you want to, and it's, you can, you can tell me what to do. You want to keep pushing on? Are there any large, like, okay. are there any large, like, hills or areas that kind of have higher yeah. elevation yeah, there's high ele there's definitely higher elevation areas it's gonna take a survival check to like find an appropriate one to sleep at but you know all right 10 yeah easy check is good enough you can eventually find an area that's not completely soaked through i guess i'll make camp a there a, then a small hill tell everybody hey found some dry land Mm -hmm. So you guys head over there, and you're going to set up camp, unless you want to push on, but you've already traveled eight hours today. Mm. Of course. I mean, we're not going to make it all the way there one fucking day. So. No. No. The, it's, yeah, it's rough terrain. Yeah. I'll just chill. Okay. Uh, I tell Desmond about this wonderful spell that Damien had called Damien's Tiny Hut. Mm. It was great for situations like this. Where it's oh, dangerous or you inclement. told me about that. Interesting little thing. I look forward to exchanging spells with him for it. Now, how he thought that one up. Maybe it was situations like this. Yeah. He may not be the wisest wizard, but uh, I suppose he's crafty. Yes, indeed. Uh, Resh Cable Morden, everybody. I guess they proceed to make small talk. Any conversations you guys want to have, or do you want me to skip to the 11th? I'm going to ask Arash people what she knows about artifact weapons. So, so, Arash Kiko, uh, uh, what do you know about uh, living weapons? She turns to look at you. I'm such a curious little bastard. Like, everybody's like, get away. She seems amused with you. Guardian, witch queen, usurper, brought low by conversations with <laughs> bugbears. <laughs> Everybody. You can't get much lower than Sean. She just, like, smiles at you. A great deal. Well, what do you know about them, Bugbear? I know Orsic's weapon is very strong and very funny. Oh, um, really? Probably not anymore, though. And Desmond has a nice living weapon, and it looks so strong and, and sharp. And good for chopping heads. And Shog want a big chopper, but he wants he wants a he wants an artifact weapon. I think what Shark's to, trying to say is he wants a bastard sword. To keep the forest in the human kingdom safe. Well. I don't know about an artifact weapon, but the king 
the human empire recently went missing through a dark portal to the shadow plane. She goes, ooh. <laughs> He's just telling me a story. <laughs> She's very amused with you. For some reason, I rolled a natural 20. No way. She, yeah. She's That's like, like dope she reputation. likes, she okay. wants to play with you. If you were such a big, strong bugbear, you could go there. Said that his weapon was of immense power. A two-handed sword that decapitates its enemies. Called oh. the Bluder. Oh! That, that's real? That exists? Yes, I heard from my soldiers personally that he was a savage beast on the battlefield, slicing off heads here and there before he was teleported into the Shadow Plane. Who knows? He might still be there, chopping heads as we speak. Shog want a strong weapon like that. Concluder. Yeah. That's what he says like slowly. Concluder. Ah. Uh. Areshka go, you help Shog, I thank you. Morton thinks better of <laughs> of trying to dissuade her sharpened blade, her tongue, as it were. He just mm, lets her talk. That's right. That's what we're doing here, after all. Saving the world from the shadow play. And her. Perhaps you should be asking her about Concluder. Her other half is the ruler of the Shadow Plane, after all. She's trying to use smaller words to help you understand, by the way. It's like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Violet won't tell me anymore. I already asked her. She won't talk to me. Oh, I'm sure if you asked nicely, she would open a portal to the Shadow Plane for you. You need only go there and retrieve it. Big strong man like you shouldn't have a problem with that. What, after walking to the plane of death with me? Yes, maybe after. <laughs> maybe after I get concluded. That's a plan. Sounds okay. like a good one. Okay. Go there. <laughs> so I'm yes. just like kind of excited now. He's like, oh, nice. Okay. Embrace your destiny, Shog. Okay, Rishka, go. Thank you. Horn shakes his head. <laughs> <laughs> he just goes off humming to himself happy. He's already imagining chopping heads. Great two-handed sword. <laughs> Concluder. <laughs> Chop heads <laughs> all day. <laughs> Excellent. So you guys slumber on through the night. Maybe. Maybe you don't sleep. Um, armor on or off? Off. Oh. Desmond sleeps with it on. Uh, I should ask if my hammer still glows or not. It's not going right now. Okay. I can't tell you anything more than that. Um, but you haven't really talked to your hammer, you know? Like, you don't even know what its new abilities are. You have to ask. <laughs> or is a little hesitant to talk to it. Mm-hmm. Um, but believe it or not, the night passes surprisingly uneventfully. It is the 11th of Sunscorch, though the name probably doesn't reflect your surroundings. Uh, it is, it's a pretty hot and sticky day here in the swamp. Um, the dead trees all around you make it a bit darker than it should <clears throat> normally be. In fact, you're kind of looking around and you're like, man, I, mean, I know this is a swamp and all, but it's awfully dark in here. 
And you guys, uh, I guess, push on into the actual swamp as you're finally starting to actually push through. Um, deeper and deeper you're traveling, and now we're talking like knee-high water. Pretty gross. Arresh Kegel, um... Yeah. She uses a phantom steed where she can, as best she can. It's hard to actually use a horse here, but it's not a real horse. It's a phantom horse. So she tries to stay out of the water if she can. And um, she says something as you guys begin to travel on to Imhulus. She says, uh, be on your guard. Imhulu isn't known for his housewarming gifts. If you have a source of light, I would advise you have it at the ready. And yeah, you guys keep walking through. And as you keep walking through, it's getting darker and darker. Yes. The swamp is thickening, and the water is deepening, and the sounds of life are dimming. The trees completely die. And the paladin in you knows this is an unholy place. Well, I bet my hammer feels at home. Yes. You are holding your hammer still, right? In case yeah, it yeah, yeah. does glow or anything. Yep, I'm holding it at the moment. Okay. Well. Wow, okay. Cool. Uh, yeah, so sure enough, like... Uh, yeah. Three hours into your travel... Wow. Um... Your hammer begins to glow its soft purple glow, and it whispers to you. Do you feel it? Their despair, their hunger, absolutely exhilarating. <clears throat> Tell me, who's hunger? scoffs whose despair are we supposed to be feeling one of the tentacles kind of sticks up and points at you and says what a miserable paladin you've made open your heart to the world worm do you not smell their desperation their suffering I take a moment to reflect on what it's meaning mm -hmm. and yeah. is it an actual sense it's trying to like it's feeling and trying to convey to me or is it just like a that's what it's thing? claiming I mean can I feel it too or no Am I not in touch with that feeling? Hmm. Yes. Um. Yeah. I mean, if you cast Divine Sense, it says, The presence of strong evil registers in my senses like a noxious odor. Right. Powerfully, powerful good rings in my, like, heavenly music in my ears. I can detect the awareness of such forces. Blah, blah, blah. You know within, like, 60 feet where undead or fiends or general evil right, right. is. You don't know the nature of the evil. Um, but you know it would be, like, undead, but you don't know, like, 
specific natures about it. Yeah, but it's it's that sort of thing that it's talking about. It's not like that's what it's. I mean, I don't want to metagame, but that's what it seems like it's inferring when it says like okay. you're a paladin, you should be able to sniff out these things. Okay. Okay. I mean, I guess in that case, I will cast divine sense. Mm -hmm. So. So you open your mind to the world around you, and you do indeed pick up a horrible, depraved smell. Uh, you pick up that there are. You can almost you can almost see them, but you can't quite. It's that kind of powerful. Y there are dozens of these horrible creatures <clears throat> nearby. Mm -hmm. So I'm not like blinded by my weapons, like um, evil. Evil. No, you're not blinded by it. Um, I'm able to see past that. Um. Yes, you're able to see past the evil right next to you. You can. I'm just saying you you can just sense like all evil within like sixty feet or whatever. Right, right, right. <clears throat> And there are dozens of evil signatures. Alright. Okay. I kind of tense up and lift my hammer a little higher, then. Um, are you, like, purposely trying to make a scene? Like, sticking it high in the air? No, I'm, like, like instead of, like, holding it at my side or whatever. Like walking with it in my arms, I'm like You're holding using it, it as like a torch or something. No, I'm like holding it at the ready, you know. Oh, ready okay. to swing. Okay. Um, Arash Kegel seems unfazed, but continues walking forward and seems to have also picked up on whatever it is that you had picked up on. She just like glances idly to Morden, and she says, "Now, Morden." And they both begin chanting spells. And a moment later, both of their staves begin glowing brightly from the tip. She turns to all of you. If you've got a torch on hand, light it. Uh, she says that she's like fishing for something in a satchel. Completely stops moving at this point. I got dark vision. You say that? <laughs> I got dark vision. Idiot. So have I. She retracts a bag holding a crystal ball, um, or from the bag, a crystal ball. Uh, she kind of like looks over all of you, laying bored eyes on the brutish bugbear. You, hold this. Uh, and she whispers a few words in the language of magic. Do you take the crystal ball, Shog? Yeah. All right, as you take the ball, it begins glowing brightly. Pretty, pretty fucking bright. You're like, yeah. oh, <laughs> bright as hell. <laughs> Great. Uh, yeah, and then she keeps walking. Desmond, I guess, strikes a torch. Um, I so, put it over my head because I don't want to see it anymore. I just start like holding it over my head, like. Ugh. So we got two light spells. We got a, an orb that emits a lot of light. Uh, we got a torch, and we got Orsix glowy weapon. Is it like a fainter, like, because you said it's purple now. Yeah. It's like a, it's like a sickly purple. Yeah, yeah. I think that the color on our mini-map adequately describes the color of yeah. purple. Yeah, yeah. To set up an image. All right. Cool. So. Um, 
moments later, dozens of these black cloaked figures begin crowding around just outside the light radius, which is powerful at this point. Their red soulless eyes veiled in darkness, transfixed upon all of you. They hover in midair. The only sound they make is a deep, disturbing exhale. They seem fearful of the light, and while they make every attempt to keep pace, they purposely stay out of range of its brightness. So there's just dozens of these creatures like encircling your light radius. So the ones in front of us are just like moving out of the way or moving. There are backwards. none in front of oh, you. Okay, so they, they are like, all trailing us. Keep keep pace and stay yeah. behind. Okay. Yeah. I look I look around and I see them and I kind of shit. I'm like, oh. I know. What the hell is that? Don't let them touch you. Uh, okay. Do they not like this light? Yes. The daylight is anathema for them. Anathema. Okay. They will never leave. They will follow us all the way to the sunken city. Do not drop that orb. Okay. Like feeling lucky. Okay. Um... And I think that's probably a good place to end the session. Working our way to the sunken city. Cool. Yeah. Sounds fun. So. Experience. Uh, go ahead and add the recap experience. Um, didn't do any combat this session. Lots of RP. Uh... Anyone complete goals? Shock, you might have. I think I completed one of them. That was the collect the utensil. I think that was the short term. So that was, yeah, you were four this week for short term goal collect kitchen utensils, pots, pans, portable oven. Um, the portable oven, that's not really a thing. So yeah, I thought that the the stand pretty much was yeah. That's was that's as good as that. it gets. So you complete your short term goal. Um, you are at two for host a feast for party of allies as long goal. I haven't done that yet. Let me actually write this down for you. Shog long goal. And I ain't going out to the swamp to find shit. Those shades are going to kill me. I'm going to suck my life out. Something like that. Uh, well, it's my sheets. Ah, yes. So, uh, DMG, DMG. Page 82. You get, uh, what's your level? 12. 12. Wow. All right. You get 2,000 experience for completing your short-term goal. 2,000, you said? Yes. Yes. All right. And try to think up a new short-term goal or make the long-term goal a short-term goal as a feast may be something easy for you to do now yeah i'll make do a, that pick up yourself a long-term goal get concluder from hell <laughs> i don't want concluder <laughs> i don't know i want my own let's see i'm gonna find that shit i'm gonna like go into it 
sunken city and find a fucking artifact of it. Oh yeah? In the sunken city? Yeah. Okay. Wow. No, I don't know what I don't know what's in the sunken city, but I do want to investigate. That would be pretty cool. Uh huh. Uh, so I don't think you guys really did anything else, right? You not really. Yo, know, man, we just chatted up a storm. Pretty much. Yep. I got a lot of shit done. Sometimes though. those are the fun sessions. Dude, I got my guy like pretty much right where I want him now. Fucking around, pissing off bartenders. That's D and D. Those are the fun sessions. Um. Yeah. I think I already gave you experience for, for you getting the artifact weapon something last week. So. Yeah. I think this is just going to be a week experience yeah. session. Um, but we're working on a quest. Mm -hmm. And keep working on them goals. And yeah. So yeah, it was a fun session. Thanks for joining. Are we good for next Sunday? Anyone yeah, not yeah. able to do that? Pretty certain, good. pretty certain next Sunday works. Excellent. Plus, I have well, to then. work at eight in the fucking morning, which I'm not gonna. Oh yeah. I might be doing that, but we'll see. <clears throat> Sounds terrible. Yes. All right. Well, thanks everybody for playing, and we'll see you next week. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye.